Uh, today marks a new dawn in the history of Nigerian football because uh, maybe some of our friends, the journalists, uh, can tell us when the, the last time we were here to hold this kind of ceremony. Uh, but by the grace of God, today we are holding this type of ceremony, which I think it happens not less than eight, nine years back. Uh, but we decided to see that uh, any time we are going to do whatever we, want to, we need to do, we must do it properly so that uh, everybody will know what we are doing and everybody must be part of it. Well, today, as I said, is a historic day for us, uh, a day where I'm availing uh, the coach of the senior national team. If we could remember, uh, for the first two and a half months, after the expiration of our contract with the last Super Eagles coach, Coach Facero, uh, we have been looking around Nigerians who are glamouring for the new coach for the Super Eagles. Uh, thank God we listened to the yearning of Nigerians that uh, the popular view was we need an indigenous coach. And then we listened to it and then we tried to make sure that we do what Nigerians want. And that is why we mandated the technical committee to sit down and look at the available number of Nigerians that apply, applied for the job with the head coach of the Super Eagles. It may interest you to know the number of foreign interested candidates that apply for the post at, outweighed the number of the indigenous coaches, even times 10, if not, if not more than times 10. But uh, as I have said earlier, we have to listen to the yearning of Nigerians. They said they need an indigenous coach, and that was the mandate we gave to the Technical and Development Committee to look at the available candidates we have and then try and make sure they do the needful and they do the right thing and give Nigerians the best. There are so many criteria out of it. When we talk about Nigerians, everybody knows who Pinit George is when it comes to the area of the game, when it comes to the area of how he started his uh, coaching career in the area of training, coaching a uh, second division team over there, and then later on decided to come back home and uh, do what he needed to do in order to develop our football in the country. And uh, to God be the glory uh, because of his commitment. I think the first year he handled Aemba, he was able to win the Premier League, which is a very good uh, beginning for him. Uh, so I know it takes a very serious and diligent work by the committee. And uh, we have made it make our mind that once we give you a responsibility uh, and you know you are doing it for Nigeria and Nigerians. So we don't interfere in what you are going to do. We give you, we take an oath and you make a promise that you are going to do it to the best of your ability. And you are going to give us the best for Nigeria. And uh, the technical committee decided on their own to, 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 to choose Finiji Jones to be the coach of the Super Eagles. And then uh, I forwarded their recommendation to the board, and my board graciously approved the recommendation of the board, as well as the Honorable Minister of Sports. So that is to tell you that it has been a long process. A lot of time Nigerians call, when is the new coach coming out? It's not something that you just wake up in the morning and we announce the name of a new coach. And uh, it's not good to be the coach of an, an, an under-17 team, that will come and start training young kids how to play football. And every single person that apply for the position of the head coach of the Super Eagles not, know exactly what, he, what he's going to do. He knows where he's going to, and he knows the people he work with, and he knows how he's going to do it before he even decides to apply. So it doesn't make any sense, but we need to do what we're we supposed to do to make sure that at least the right thing is done. The most important thing is all of us should try and make sure that we put him in prayer so that uh, Nigeria will succeed. Uh, there's nothing know how. It is only one person that will head the head, the super, the senior national team as the head coach at a particular time. And for now, God says it is Pinity Judge. So it is important for all of us to rally around around him, to support him in whatever way we can for Nigeria to succeed, especially on our next task ahead of us, which is uh, qualification to the World Cup as well as qualifying to the next upcom. And by the grace of God, winning it. We narrowly miss it in Abidjan, but by the grace of God, we are going to get it to Morocco. 
So it is time for us to start prayer, to start praying for him. And then after employing him, we discuss within ourselves, it will make it as a policy. Every single coach we employ to handle any of our national team, we give him the opportunity to choose his assistants. And then we talk to the coach, you should try and make sure you pick people that will support you to succeed. Nobody will impose anybody on you. And then luckily, uh, Penidi decided to choose uh, about uh, three foreign assistants. Uh, uh, we have um, two indigenous assistants, isn't it? In person of uh, Daniel Omokachi and uh, Barua, who is going to be, Barua will be as uh, the goalkeeper trainer. And then we have Chima Onyeke, uh, which will, who is going to be a fitness trainer. I think he's from Germany, eh? He's, he's, he's in Holland now. Then uh, we have Mohamed Ozutok. He's going to be a match analyst. And then there is uh, Benjamin James, which, who is going to also be an assistant coach. So all these three are based in the Europe. Only the two, Daniel Abokachi and uh, uh, Barua, Abiodun Barua, that are. Olatunji, Olatunji Barua, yeah as goalkeeper trainer. So, uh, hmm? and then these uh, coaches, you know, we want to avoid any issue of uh, having conflicts in the area of paying coaches. For the coach, we are going to agree on how we are going to pay him monthly, but every other assistance, we are engaging them on invitational basis. We are going to engage them in, on invitational basis. Whatever we agree, once we invite you for a match, or uh, for a qualifier, or for a tournament, this is what we are going to pay you. Then, including other allowances that are that the team is entitled to. Whatever the team is entitled to at any point and in time, that assistant coach or whoever is entitled to it. And there are a certain amount of money that we are going to agree to pay them whenever we invite them to come for any qualifier or any tournament. We just want to avoid the issue of uh, having crisis in the payment of salaries. And by the grace of God, I want to assure Nigerians that we'll do our best to make sure that uh, that history is gone. We'll support Pinidi. We'll give him whatever he needed to work. And uh, the issue of paying his salary will not be a problem by the grace of God. We are going to do our best to make sure that we support him. Right now, uh, part of his contract, we, 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 are, we must get him a comfortable house that he can stay in Nigeria, which we are in the process. Uh, we give him the privilege to make sure that at least he agree on where he's going to stay, and then we provide him with, a tra with transport. He already has a car that he's using with him, except a driver. So whatever we need to do to make him comfortable to do his job, we are going to do our best. As I've said earlier, the best thing is we are just uh, pleading on every single Nigerian to try and help us in prayer. It's key uh, for us to succeed. On this note, I just want to use this opportunity to congratulate uh, Mr. Pinidi and uh, the rest of his assistants, and to reassure them that by the grace of God, we will do our best to support them in whatever way for them to succeed.